Bob, go down. Uh, Representative Bariso, I think, wanted to speak now. Thank you, Senator Bradley. It was first to uh, pass up the opportunity. So, uh, I am Phil Riazzo, representative in West Manchester. And uh, House Bill 442 is a bill that would allow sick and dying patients in New Hampshire access to a medication that can either help them with the very fight for their lives or help them to obtain some relief in their final days. The bill is simply about patients' rights and the relationship between that person and their doctor. I've lost two grandparents to cancer, and I'm sure I'll lose other members to it. I challenge anyone in this room with a sick and dying relative to sit here and tell me they would go against their doctor's recommendation during a health crisis, especially if it meant life or death for them or their loved one, or because the federal government refused to allow the states access to any given drug. What I find most disturbing is while states like New Hampshire struggle with making this available to our sick and dying, the federal government has been operating their own program all along. <coughs> they even have their own medical marijuana farm in Mississippi. So why do we continue to allow them to tell us our sick and dying can't use it while they grow it for their own designees. How can anyone hold up federal law as the reason to oppose this while they're being so duplicitous? We don't want government run health care for a reason. They shouldn't be involved in the decision making of doctor patient relationships. Now, something most people don't know is that New Hampshire once had its own medical marijuana law and it lasted for nearly 20 years. In 1981, a staunch conservative Republican senator put forward Senate Bill 21. Senator Sanborn, not this Senator Sanborn, uh, was a man in his late 60s who, at the request of a sick and dying constituent and her doctor, sponsored the bill. While researching the background on the New Hampshire's uh, law, his widow disclosed that he did it because it was the right thing to do. Please do the same. I found other interesting connections from this bill to that one. When it was heard by this committee back in 1981, it was also chaired by a very strong Republican. Her name was Vesta Roy. Her committee unanimous, unanimously passed this measure, and I respectfully ask nothing less from this committee. It was signed into law by Governor Hugh Gallon and stayed in effect until 1999. It was killed with a simple amendment. From that time until now, countless sick and dying New Hampshire residents and their families have been subjecting themselves to the criminal element and potential prosecution in order to save their lives or obtain relief. This year, according to the American Cancer Society, 7,810 New Hampshire residents will be diagnosed with cancer, and 2,660 of them will die from it. If we do the math, a conservative estimate would show roughly 85,000 people over the last 13 years without this law may have jeopardized their safety and freedom to obtain it. My friend, Representative John Reagan, says if we look at the cost of medication the state pays for in respect to certain patients, this measure may actually save the state a million dollars every month. We also have our military veterans to consider here. If you go to the VA hospital and take a deep breath, you'll soon realize this medication is being utilized there as well. Do we really want to see these people arrested? The Veterans Administration doesn't think so and issued a directive that allows it to be used in VA hospitals of the states that have this law in place. I ask you to support them. Now, law enforcement will always have the duty to protect and serve, and these are the most vulnerable people they should be protecting and serving. Officers still have the ability to continue current practices. This only takes away a revenue stream from drug dealing criminals. Now, in 1998, prior to the bill that passed the House and Senate, vetoed by the governor and lost by two veto overrides, there was a poll taken. 71% of New Hampshire residents then supported this. 87% Democrats, 56 Republicans. That number has gone up. This is not something that people are concerned about when it comes to drug policy. They understand the issue and they want to see their loved ones be able to have full access to anything that will give them uh, relief or help them fight their, 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 their battle. So that's all that I have. And I submitted a, a packet regarding Senate Bill 21, the calendar, from the House and the Senate, actually the journal from the House and the Senate, the amendment that killed it, the, uh, the executive summary from the National Institute of Medicine, who was the sponsor of the study that the government did on this, who says that using cannabinoids is, is a favorable thing to do. I also submitted the, uh, the drug death data that Senator, uh, Attorney, Attorney General Kelly Ayotte submitted in 2006 that shows what prescription drugs people have died from in that, in that time frame. This was not one of them. And uh, then there's the facts from the Cancer, Cancer Society. <coughs> I thank you very much and ask that you pass 442. Well, thank you, Representative Rizzo. Uh, a couple of more reps who have signed up and don't wish to speak, Representative Manus.